Christ Community Church and C3 Media presents the Deeper Dive Podcast. Pastor Dina and Pastor Mitch are about to take you on a deeper dive into the Bible. So here is your host, Pastor Dina Harder. Well, hey there, and welcome back to our Deeper Dive podcast. And yes, Pastor Dina here, uh, but I have with me uh, not Pastor Mitch this time, but it may be a familiar face to some of you. This is Judy Orr. Hi, Judy. Hello. (laughs) Now, I'm so glad that you're back uh, joining us. You were on a few weeks ago. Uh, sharing a testimony on one of the podcasts, but uh, Miss Judy, as we all say, because she works at our C3 Kids Child Development Center, Mm -hmm. and she also is co-facilitator of our PALS group here, Um, but you just recently came back from a mission trip Mm -hmm. that was like almost three weeks long. Almost, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, like we're talking mission trip to Uganda. Uganda, East Africa. Yeah. Yeah. And I just love, I love mission trips. Uh, Those that have listened to any of these podcasts for any length of time have heard me talk about some of the mission trips that I've been on. Um, Just that's a deep thing in my heart that God Mm -hmm. spoke to me. And uh, I know, Judy, I think you said this might have been your first. um, It was my first overseas missions trip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you went for three. Almost three Almost weeks. Almost three weeks, yeah. That's, we're about a couple days short of three weeks. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's yeah. a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it went fast, though. I thought it was a long time. I think my husband thought it was a long time. <laughs> yes, yeah. But um, it went really quickly. Uh, and, you know, the best part is I got to go with my son. Yes, 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 which is so. a huge testimony. Yes. This is the son that you were talking about uh, in that other podcast mm-hmm. with the testimony. Mm-hmm. And now you got to go on your first overseas mission trip yep. with your son. With my son. Yeah, yep. God yep. is good. It is. He is. He is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> so we're going to jump into some testimonies <clears throat> in just a minute. But first, I wanted to start with a scripture. So our deeper dive for today is in Matthew 28, um, because uh, when we talk about missions and, you know, why we do it, well, it's part of the great commission that Mm. uh, Jesus gave us all. So if we turn in Matthew 28, so that's one of the gospels, it's the last chapter in Matthew, and we'll look at verses 18 through 20. It says, then Jesus came to them, this is to his disciples at the time, and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them of the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And I know as we were talking about this uh, before we started the podcast, how you just felt God's presence around you Mm. the whole time you were there. Very true. So true. I just felt the Holy Spirit around us the entire time. I just had a lot of peace while I was over there. And mm-hmm. this is like my, my first time like overseas. Yeah. You know, Bahamas yeah. don't count. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk but, a little um, bit about your journey. Is this something that you just kind of pictured that you'd be doing? And <laughs> never, never yeah. thought I'd ever go on a missions trip. I thought there's no way you're going to get me to do anything like that. <laughs> um, but, you know, things, God changes you. Yeah. God changes you and um, he answers prayers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just um, seeing everything that my son has done in the last five years with his sobriety Mm -hmm. and how he's gone after God. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I got to do this. I was going to say, I thought you shared that that was kind of what really um, just sparked something in your journey of faith. You know, his sobriety. Seeing, yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Once we found um, your our church, Christ mm-hmm. Community Church, um, right off the bat, I just I hit the ground running. I was I was afraid because we had left the church because our past pa- our pastor didn't really help us, and mm. we felt alone. Mm. But we found found Christ Community Church 
felt like home right away. Everybody's so friendly. And so I just jumped right in first, you know, oh, Bible studies Wednesday nights, man. I was coming. I came to everything I could possibly come to. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to learn more and get back to like when I was a teenager, you know, I, I was, I, I was water baptized back then when I was 16 okay. and, you know, was mm -hmm. going for God. And then some tragic things happened in life and, you know, mm -hmm. I'd gotten away from them. Yeah. And now after the miracle with our son, I'm like, I got, I got to do God's work. I got to learn more. Yeah. And never knew we'd ever get into, um, missions work. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we met Sam Childers from AOEA, and no. I'm like, I'm going. For those who may not know, what is AOEA? Oh, Angels of East Africa. Okay. That's the name of the nonprofit. Okay. He's and, been there 25 years. And Sam has another name. <clears throat> Oh, Machine Gun Preacher. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. And I've heard there's that movie, and that's based on his life. That's Is based that right? on his life, yep. Okay. It's based on, you know, how he got started in missions overseas. Mm -hmm. um, and it's in, you, you pull it up and watch it, you know. It's, yeah. It's really interesting. And he's 60 years old now and still going strong ah. and still building and still rescuing children. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean... I have like several pages. <laughs> <laughs> you got a journal. I do. <laughs> so we're going to hit some highlights, but I just yeah. wanted to make sure we'll put uh, the link to his yeah. website um, in the description of this podcast for any yeah. of you that want to check it out. Uh, I remember my husband, and I saw the movie Machine oh, yeah. Gun Preacher, but yeah. now getting to hear first hand accounts of what he's doing over there. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really it's God's work. It's amazing. And, and let me just say, you know, I didn't know. I met Sam once or twice before this trip. And he was with us the entire time. Mm -hmm. And I got to give this guy a lot of credit and a lot of praise because everything he talked about um, that he has accomplished, mm -hmm. he gives a credit to God. He mm -hmm. said, God told me to build this. God told me to buy this. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah. He said, God told me to go here. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he said, God provided for me. He, he'd say, I don't have the money, Lord. And God mm -hmm. said, just do it, you know, or yeah. however he yeah. said it, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but... Mm -hmm. um, I, and, and that was very impressive because a lot of people have, you know, not such a good opinion because of how he has saved children in the past, mm -hmm. you know, because of the wars over there and stuff. Yeah. But um, this man gives the glory to God everything mm -hmm. he does. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everywhere we went. <laughs> yeah. So, so before we get to the actual time there, you were sharing about a couple things that like God kind of spoke to you that were confirmations as you were are you talking uh, about this uh no right before no. you got to that oh, when okay. you were sharing about uh starting to get involved in missions um before you even got on the plane but you said it was almost like a dream oh yeah growing up you know I grew up in a broken home you know and it, we won't get into that but right. you know I always felt like um I I was supposed to be somewhere else you know mm -hmm. I don't I didn't know what it was I always felt kind of lost and I would look into the sunset and I would say am I supposed to go to California what is with the sunset <laughs> and this was in my 20s right when you know and um long story short you know I I, I realized that you know I always wanted to be a mom Mm -hmm. and have kids and I thought that was my purpose in life you yeah. know and that's all I ever wanted I wanted Which, a marriage mm -hmm. you know my kids are grown I have grandchildren you know mm -hmm. and, my, and those are wonderful things. yeah what a blessing. And, and they're healthy and happy but I always felt like I was missing something mm -hmm. you know and um then when this all came up you know I just knew that this is what God wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. And he, and I told you about Dennis Kramer. Well, you need to tell that too. Because okay. you felt, you just said you felt like he woke you up and said, it's time or something. Didn't you say that in your dream that God was saying that? Well, yeah. 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 Whenever and we found out that we could go. Yes. To Uganda with Sam. Okay. Yes. Okay. But when we had that 
one part with um, Dennis Kramer with the staff. Yes. yes. And one of the things, and it was just funny because God has always been calling me and I was always disobeying and saying, no, mm-hmm. that's, that's, no, that's not right. Mm-hmm. I don't know where this is coming from. And Dennis Kramer said, God said, Dennis Kramer is a prophet. Just as Sorry. we're talking, no, I was thinking I need to just <laughs> yes, include that. Thank you. So he is a prophet. He moves, he's in the office of a prophet. And so he's come to us uh, different times to give prophetic words. And you're talking just About, recently it was yes. in June when yes. we had our staff training and mm-hmm. he came just to speak over the staff and yeah. he had a word for you. Yeah. So one of the things that, that God told Dennis to tell me is that it's better late than never. <laughs> and he said it three times, better late than never, better late than never. And I just laughed because I thought, oh, my word. <laughs> there you go. It's time. <laughs> it's time. And not long after that, you know, found the opportunity that we can do this and go on this missions trip, which was, I thought, would be in December originally. Yeah. But it turned out it was in August. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, God said, okay, it's time. There you go. And so I did it. (laughs) Yes, you did. You were obedient. And then all of a sudden, God provided the funding. Yeah, uh, the funding came right through right away. Yep. Right away, it came right through. And then even more, I mean, when people were finding out that I were going, I, you know, it very generous on their part. I'm not talking like big dollars or anything, but they were, I'm like, Thank you. I just didn't know what to say because I was, I was like, I, I, um, yeah. yeah, I don't Thank have the you. words. <laughs> yeah, And they so. are a part. Anybody that sows seeds into, say, in this case, a missionary, they're a part. They will get credited for the things that you did because they were a part of mm, that by yeah. sowing seeds, So, which I love. I think it's such a blessing. I think it, it was such a blessing. It, it just happened so quick, which I never expected. Yeah. You know, I thought I was really going to have to work hard for this, <laughs> you know, and it God's like, nope, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to hit on a couple testimonies, but tell me about uh, just life in Uganda. Is it a little different than it is here? Life in Uganda is <laughs> very different from here. Absolutely. It is a, really a poor country and people... Um, they really don't have a lot there. And um, in the cities, there is electricity, but when you go out into the countryside, there's none. Mm-hmm. They have they, they have no electricity, no running water, uh-huh. um, no flushing toilets. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and the roads are, you know, they're a little odd, too. The main road's paved, you know. Mm-hmm. But when you get off the roads in Uganda, it's, it's like red clay. Their, mm-hmm. their dirt is like red clay. And then in the rainy season, you get all of the little gullies and... And, you know, and you're like running through. You <laughs> smooth know. ride. Oh, ride yeah, real now. smooth ride. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's that kind of stuff was different. Now, you know, and I didn't know what to expect. And I didn't, I just wanted to leave myself open because I didn't want to expect something. And, you know, and it obviously wouldn't have been right because right. I'd never been there before. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, so tell me a few of the things, tell us a few of the things that you did while you were there. Well, we, when we got there, yeah, we, um, we visited all three of his, um, orphanages and we did okay. the first one was, um, just outside of Uganda, not far from where, um, machine gun preacher lives. Um, and it's a small orphanage, about 25 children there. And they range from the age of that off orphanage has two to 18 year olds, I believe. Okay. Um, and most of them, it's that they only go up to 18. Mm-hmm. Um, cause he educates them and everything. So, wow. and that's just a small one. Um, one of the, one of the things that was really heartbreaking was there a little girl there. Her name was Patricia mm-hmm. and she was totally blind mm-hmm. and they had found, uh, Patricia through the Bush Kids Project. So what that is, is they go out into the bush to these small little areas and bring food and clothes and medicines. Mm. And they treat them for malaria and for, you know, all the children's diseases. Um, 
they had seen her at one, um, and then they'd gone to another area, and here this little girl was again at this at the other place that they had visited, mm. you know, with the medications and stuff, and she was sitting all alone. Aww. And um, Pastor Michael, Mikey, mm-hmm. as we know him, <laughs> um, he's like, oh, we got to get this. We got to get her. We can't leave her here. You know, yeah. She's all by herself. Mm. And that's when they discovered that she was blind, completely blind. So um, they talked to him and they um, signed custody over to Sam. Okay. And that's what he does with all of his children. It, mm-hmm. That's a whole yeah. another issue, you know, why they do that over there because yeah. of fraud and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, and so um, now she is um, four years old or two years, no, yeah, four years old. Mm-hmm. I forget. I'm sorry. It's all right. We'll go with uh, four. <laughs> but anyway, um, she is now in a school for blind, for the wow. blind, Sam Sensor. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, um, so what she a change will in be, her life. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And she's all chubby and has meat on her bones. And yeah. one of the other little girls there, her name was Ava, and she was... No, probably three or four years older than Patricia, but she was mothered her. Mm. She just held her hand and talked to her and just yeah. mothered her. She was just a sweetheart, too. Mm. And the kids there are so grateful and thankful, and they're so happy. Mm-hmm. The children, even like when we were out in the bush, they're happy kids. Even Unless they're they, getting a shot. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who likes that? <laughs> but they are, yeah. Yeah. yeah they even really though they are. don't have anything as far as like to our standards here right. in America, our... you have things everywhere mm-hmm. and they don't have things, mm-hmm. but they have each other. Right. They have each other and, and they love each other and they're they they're together they just they're family yeah each and every place that we went is mm-hmm. family you yeah. know that's how they treat each other we went to gulu which is like eight hours away and that one is some of the children have medical issues okay and there's a two-year-old there james who stole my heart Aww. and um he has some problems a lot of these kids um, young and teens, you know, they suffer from PTSD. They suffer from you know, post-traumatic distress. From? Well, from losing their parents. Okay. Some of the children have seen their parents murdered over there mm. by the rebels. Mm. See, and I'm asking because if people, you know, don't study into these things, right. I mean, we're so, know. even though we've got a lot of hard things going on right now in our nation, but we're far removed from the things that they see there. Nothing so. that we are experiencing over here can compare to what these children have been through. Yeah. Nothing. So they've I mean, seen even, wars. And you know, divorced families and stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't downsize any oh, kind yeah, of, no. you know, of Americans that we have problems with abuse right. and that kind of stuff. But yes. these children are just... Yeah, mm. if it wasn't for Sam, most of them may not be alive. Yeah. So this yeah. was another orphanage mm-hmm. that he has. Yeah, in that Gulu. Area. Yeah, yeah. He had. There's about 25 children there, and it's about the same age group. Okay. And then we went to. We spent five days in South Sudan at the orphanage. There was 187 children there. Oh my goodness! It's a huge compound. Wow. It, I think that was the original one. Okay. That was his first one. And um, a great big compound. There's a um, school building with five mm. or six classrooms. Um, they, uh, uh, the teenagers had their own sleeping quarters. Girls and boys are separated. Mm-hmm. And then the younger kids, I think they did them as age groups, mm-hmm. pretty sure. And um, I now have 187 new grandchildren. Okay. Well, there you go. Because <laughs> they want to know your name. What's your name? What's your name? Yeah. You know? And then I was like, you know what? Just call me Nana because that's what my grandkids call me. And um, those kids, they were so much fun. They they just, they love to see your phone. They like to get your picture taken. Oh, take yes. my photo. Take yes. my photo. So I have like uh, hundreds of pictures <laughs> of the kids and it's like, just a yes. different pose in the same kids, but that's okay. So we'll um, be showing you, for those that are <laughs> watching this, if you're just listening, you might want to go back and watch this podcast then because we're going to be showing you some of the pictures of the trip oh, okay, as cool. you're talking. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, and those kids, you know, they, um, 
they they take care of each other. They're like a big mm-hmm. family there. Now we did some work there with the grounds, and we painted the inside of the church. And um, mm-hmm. um, and I have to give kudos to my son Andy that he set up and rigged up this this um, like computer and projector and and speaker and stuff and the kids got to see movies Aww. like they were in a drive-in Aww. they i'm they were so quiet it's like <laughs> well they've never seen they've anything never like seen that, it sure. like that yeah they yeah. loved it we popped popcorn for them <laughs> and passed out popcorn so the first night we did um the lion king oh. and then a night or two later um we did uh, monsters inc and then we took that, that into one. the church <laughs> yeah. and so they got the echo going on oh the kids just had they just loved it there. Yeah. i just love sitting back watching them you know and i mean they're knee slapping laughing yeah <laughs> oh such joy yeah and some of the teenagers they thought they were just too cool but they ended up at the movie yes <laughs> yeah yeah. So, so, so Sam feeds these kids. Sam gives feeds them education, them. Mm-hmm. medical education. treatment. Yep. And they learn about God. Yep. Yep. It's all, all faith based. There yep. you go. It's all faith based. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, as far as your encounters, and uh, I mean, obviously, I know because of being on a mission trip how life changing it is. But um, you know, you saw God's hand moving and mm. I'd say amazing ways, mm-hmm. just amazing ways. And yeah. say, I think what spoke to you the most was with the Bush kids, the Bush kids. Yes. That spoke to me the most they, we were the first mission team that Sam took out to the Bush. Wow. You know, and in Kiev, I want people to know that we did have drivers and we did have security. Mm-hmm. So that was always, you know, that was well, yeah. Yeah, soothing. I yes. Guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we treated over 200 children out okay. of this one area. And I don't know the names of all these little places. No. But oh, there's over 200 children. Half of them tested positive for malaria, mm. which is a big thing in yeah. there because yes. of the mosquitoes. And it was a wet season. And I still have some bites. I still have some. <laughs> yeah, they haven't gone away yet, you know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, so we, yeah, w- and they also got immunizations for mumps and measles, chicken pox. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, speaking of chicken pox, if I don't you know, just kind of cut in here at the Kampala, I don't, um, orphanage, we mm-hmm. went before we left, we went over and took some food and some mm-hmm. clothes and, and then we took a special game for Patricia. Oh. Well, here we couldn't get out of the car because they had chicken box. Oh, no. <laughs> so the whole place was quarantined. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, so in the bush, you know, that is that is where my heart is. I, I can't stop thinking about these children because they sleep on the on the ground, on the dirt ground. They don't have floors. It's yeah. just dirt. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you know, they have mice and rats and stuff and mm-hmm. they have no food. Um, you'll see one picture, little boy with the swollen belly. Oh. Um, and uh, But we treated them. They got weighed and we took their temps and um, then the doctors and nurses, they treated them, took, mm-hmm. um, tested for everything, but uh, malaria was the biggest thing yeah. that they treat for over there because it's just so... Oh, it's so prevalent. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that is, um, I, that's been, that's my calling. I just, you know, it's, I can't get it out of my head. Mm-hmm. And God said it'll be all right. And he said, just get busy. And, you know, we'll, I'm going back next December. Oh, so and there you go. December 2023. Going yeah. back. And, um, you know, so I plan on taking clothes, jewelry for the teens. You know, the little ones need some clothes, like especially in South Sudan, you know, mm-hmm. because they're really limited there. Yeah. Um, because it's still... Um, not, I mean, there's still the fighting going on yeah, in yeah, it's Sudan. it's not safe. It's not safe, right. Mm-hmm. So, um, But you still went in. We went um, in, you know, and I just never felt, um, I never really was afraid, mm-hmm. to be honest. I always was comfortable and at peace with everything. Mm-hmm. I just knew that, I mean, the Holy Spirit's like, just relax. Yeah, I was going to say, and that came from <laughs> the uh, yeah, Holy he, Spirit. The Holy Spirit just, I mean, and he had it all over mm-hmm. us. Oh, we have a testimony from a young man that got sick. He got a bug. 
Mm-hmm. And, and when you say bug, stomach, stomach bug. bug. And yeah. those are bad, especially overseas. Stomach uh, bug. Oh, yes. yeah. He he progressive. Like a, the first day he was, it was before we went even to any of the um, orphanages. And okay. he was, I have a bellyache, bellyache, mm. you know. And then, you know, all, um, another lady um, that I went with, you know, we're a little older, just mm. a little bit. <laughs> um, and we're like, oh, well, we have this for bellies. Yes, <laughs> you know? all the so, pills you take, which is smart. Yeah, it is yeah. smart. <laughs> and, uh, and, and nothing was helping. We got to South Sudan, and he just got so sick when we got out of that mm-hmm. car. So they ended up having to call the doctor. And mm. and he said it was a bug. He tested for malaria. It wasn't malaria. Okay. And but he was dehydrated, so he got fluids. And then the medication that they gave him, um, he had a reaction to, mm. and it was almost seizure-like. It was wow. just totally shaking, sweating. He was like he couldn't get warm and. Mm calling out and it was really scary yeah so I grabbed the pastors and his wife and we went in there and we were praying over him and praying in tongues I mean that was the only way I could pray I couldn't pray regular Mm -hmm. normal I was just praying in tongues and it was just pouring out and the cool thing we had another fellow from California is 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 um, young in his Christian life, okay. okay, and he has similar backgrounds as Michael and Andrew mm-hmm. and everything, you know. And he was there laying in bed. We had woke him up. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Matt. But, sorry, um, but not sorry because <laughs> he saw this and he was awed. But so half hour within a half hour praying and worship music and you know and all of that, you know he the the young man sat up and he's like. I, I'm feeling better. He said, but I, I feel a little numb. And the doctor said, well, it'll be okay, you know. Uh-huh. And um, and then like five, I don't know, ten, I couldn't tell uh-huh. you the time amount. But, you know, he's like, I feel good. Can I get this out of him? He had the, the, the fluids. Uh, and he's yes. like, can I take yeah, this I out? They went and took it out, him and Michael. <laughs> and of course. the took doctor wasn't himself. too pleased with them, but like nothing happened. There you go. God just moved. Yay, and God. And all the prayers and brought another person closer to him. Yeah. Matt, from California. Isn't that and awesome? That was, yeah. It was scary, though. It well, kind of freaked me out. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're in Sudan. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you can just call. Okay, yeah. let's take over to the emergency room. Well, just, when you know, they like... wouldn't take them to the Sudan hospital, no. they would go over to Uganda. And that's even farther. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. But, I mean, it was just a miracle. Yeah, and yeah. He was like, I'm, and he had no problem the rest of the trip. There you go. Yeah, it was God. crazy. You Yay know, I wish God. I had some pictures, but of that, <laughs> but never even thought of that. You know, it's like no, oh not at gosh. the time. No, <laughs> this guy's gonna like stroke out or something. You yeah, know? yeah. Just because the medication didn't, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it was. So, and, and the doctor's like, oh, he'll be fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he is. He is. And he's fine. Yeah. Thanks to the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that was the biggest um, thing. But other, you know, the whole God took care of us that whole trip. Oh, I didn't tell you about please. Prayer Mountain. Oh, yeah. No, please. Prayer Mountain in Uganda. I didn't we know they up, had one there. I didn't either. That was the first day we were there. We went up to Prayer Mountain. And that's all it is. Somebody had purchased it, and now you have to pay to get into it. But you go up there. People go up there, and they pray for whatever their needs are. Oh. And some people stay up there for weeks and months but there's been somebody on that mountain praying for the last 50 years 50 50 years wow. and you can see like some some areas there's these circles where mm-hmm. they just walk in circles Around. praying yeah in circles and praying mm. and then there was other areas where just a straight line back and forth they were just mm-hmm. going back and forth and that's all they do is pray up there and you can feel it yeah. up on that mountain i wish i would have got a rock mm. didn't think of it that's all right you but, got the uh, <laughs> yeah um and so that was amazing that yeah. i mean you could just feel it on you it wasn't heavy or cumbersome it was just like hugging yeah yeah it was just like hugging and they people you know they were everywhere you know I mean it wasn't real crowded everybody had their little spots and then there was a few groups that were Mm -hmm. worshiping you know and then there were some people just like under the trees and that you know privately Mm. and that was cool yeah that was we spent a, a good part of the day 
up there. And you said that was like when you first got there. Yeah, that was the first thing we so did. They, um, Sam's like, you have to go to Prayer Mountain first. There you so go. So that's where they Cover took us. Cover it all in prayer. Yeah. And um, that was that was really cool. It was amazing. Yeah. It was really amazing. Yeah. And I do have a few pictures of that. Maybe I'll add those. Okay. And from Prayer Mountain. Yes. So yeah. I forgot about that until I was reading my journal. I'm like, oh, I can't forget about Prayer Mountain. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know what else. I mean, did some shopping, you know. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I, I, I didn't buy anything for myself. I mm-hmm. thought the trip alone was my gift. There you go. But so God had to get the grandkids and, you know, the American grandkids. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But my, my African grandkids will see stuff in December. Yes. In, in 23. So, so tell me... Um, if you can, because I, I know there's probably a lot of words, how your life has changed since before you went to now. Wow. Um, it's been a 180 degrees mm-hmm. change yeah. in my life. Um, I've never felt more um, at peace and calm about my decisions. Mm-hmm. I, um, I, I can't really find some of the words it's just you know I still wake up tired because I have to get up at 5 a.m yes yeah but it's like it's a happy tired (laughs) (laughs) it's like oh it's another day what am I going to do today how am I going to serve the Lord well there you go yeah yeah I mean that's just how it's been so if you would just take a moment, speak to people that maybe are listening to this and considering whether or not they should go on a mission trip, what would you say to them? Absolutely do it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, when Sam said, oh, this is going to change your life, and I'm like, mm, okay, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's true. You, you come back more humble. Mm-hmm. more grateful, more loving, yeah. at least me, well, yeah, yeah, you know, and it's just like, life is so good, mm-hmm. you know, that God has chosen me and he'll yeah. choose you too. I'm yeah. not kidding about that one. Yeah. But, um, I, and you know, um, I'm going to be working with angels of East Africa Mm-hmm. And uh, like I had said earlier, my focus will be on the Bush kids so mm-hmm. we can supply. So I'm going to be, you know, looking for support, any kind of support. Go to his website and, you know, he does the water wells and the, oh. e- each of the uh, orphanages. Um, he has a thousand acre farm mm-hmm. and they go rice and and maize and um, matoki and some other stuff I can't mm-hmm. pronounce. <laughs> And they use that. <laughs> they to... feed um, ten thousand meals a day. Wow! Not only wow. you know <laughs> kids in the orphanages, but you know just um, you know people uh, from different areas, yeah. towns, I guess you call them. Yeah. Um, but his his workers, mm-hmm. you know, and they had a really nice um, pat on the back for the workers were Pastor Michael and Andy and. Um, his wife, um, Pastor Mike's wife, Evelina, and they talked to the group mm. that work at the farm. Yeah. And they wanted to tell them, they told them, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for working so hard. We want you to know that you are helping to feed yeah. 10,000 meals a day That's by amazing. your work. I can't even By comprehend. your work. Yeah. yeah. It is amazing. It's. It, 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 I yeah. don't know how he does it. Yeah. Well, God, yes. that's how. Yeah. But, um... But yeah, I mean, so I I am just really all about it. Um, That'll Mm -hmm. be the rest of my life. I'll be supporting, you know, these Bush kids. And Mm -hmm. And um, going. And going. And going. And going. And I would say it's never too late. That's one of the things. It's never too late. Yeah. (laughs) God will tell you that, Mm -hmm. you know. (laughs) And I think, too, you know, those that may be younger or have... um, you know, like especially teenage kids. Um, I took my son on a mission trip to Jamaica when he was just a young teenager. Our youth group, you mm-hmm. know, went and uh, the youth group here will do mission trips mm-hmm. to now they do more so to Ecuador, but different mm. places because yeah. it is life changing. And I think, you know, go when you can. And if you have the opportunity mm-hmm. to take your children with you, take them. Yep. 
Even yep. if they're nine months old, because we traveled with a nine month yes, old. Yes, you did. There you go. So And he learned to crawl in <laughs> Africa. Wow. <Yeah. laughs> but uh, Sam is planning on bringing his granddaughters. And so I have a 10 year old granddaughter and she wants to go. So we are going to take them and we're going to, I'm going to plan it so that she can go with Sam's girls too, uh, because they're all the similar age. I'll yeah. be around the same age. So yep. she won't feel like, oh, I'm the only 10 year old and all these adults. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 How awesome. So, it is awesome. Well, thank you so much, thank Judy. You. I was really looking forward to this, and uh, it's just been great to hear. Thank you. And some. if they want to hear more, you know, you mm-hmm. can get a hold of me. There you go. Um, you know, yeah. Pastor Dina has permission to give you my email. There um, you go. No phone numbers. The one lets you text. So. <laughs> I don't. We'll, yeah. we'll just go with email. Let's go so with email. You can always comment. Yeah. Uh, below this, um, yeah. but just you know, hopefully it encourages yeah. you and your faith right. to step out. Um, because you're really doing the Lord's work. I mean, he says, take care of the orphans and And the the widows. And the widows. And and you guys were there doing that to so Mm -hmm. many beyond the orphanages, the bush kids. The bush kids. And all the people he feeds every day. Exactly, yeah. So that's that's God's heart. It is. Yeah. It is. And and a messenger, Facebook messenger, because Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'll be sharing this. And and I know I have family that will be sharing this too. Yes, yes. So that would be the other thing we would encourage you to do as we're closing. So we're going to close now, but Thank is you. to share this, um, you know, let other people hear the good things God's doing through our lives. And it doesn't mm. matter what age you are, whether mm-hmm. you're young or you're a little bit mm-hmm. older. Mm-hmm. Um, God has wonderful mm-hmm. purposes for you. And so mm-hmm. as you take that step of faith mm-hmm. and say, yes, yes, you know, he meets you there he and you. he gives you more right. than you can yeah. ask or imagine. Yeah. So that's the God we serve. And like he said, better late than never. There you go. That's <laughs> right. So take that step and uh, share this. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you, Judy. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Yeah. And then uh, until next time, when we're back, take care and God bless. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you liked what you heard today, please consider donating. You can support C3 by clicking the giving button on our homepage at cccsc.org or by texting cccsc to 833-257-5698. Thanks again and have an awesome day. And remember, God has a great plan for your life.